everybody, it's Video Bob. We're here at Bob's Prop Shop with another A-Team van. Now, the last video we did of our other A-Team van that we did on our television show Screen Machines back in 2015, uh, that video got a lot of views, and that van was really cool. And we're going to talk about the differences between that van, this van, and all the A-Team vans out there combined. I want to answer a lot of questions because there was so many comments on that video, and I was arguing with so many people about what they think is the correct van, what is right, what is wrong. Uh, oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you didn't do that. I, I hate these arguments. So we're going to address some of that stuff. We're going to talk about all the 18 vans that were used on the television show, and we're going to talk about the vans that we build here. Now, this van here is already sold. It's going to a customer up in Michigan, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we did this van differently than the last one. On the last van, the paint shop that we used mistakenly put this red line below the body line, which was incorrect. That's not the way it's supposed to be. The way it's supposed to be is above the ridge line here. And as it comes back to this door, it sl slowly gets larger. And what we figured out from watching the show is you align from the hub to here, and that's where that line begins all the way to the back, and that's how you determine the width of this. Something else that we did that was really important on the paint job of this was we managed to get both of the hinge stripes in. Above the red line is a black line. Below the red line is a uh, same color as the gunmetal gray up above. Let's talk about the gunmetal gray. I had so many arguments with people on there that said, I don't remember the gray. I thought it was just all black with a red stripe. No, there's actually gunmetal gray on top, the red line with the two pinstripes, and black. Okay, we're going to talk about the finish of the van. Excuse me, sir. Um, the finish of the van. In the first season of the A-Team, when the van came out, it was glossy. This was a problem because you could see the film crew in the side of the van. If you take a look at some of these shots here, you can see, you can literally see the director, this chair, you can see his notepad. You can almost read what he was directing. They could see the van. So uh, a, a trick that a lot of uh, special effects guys know is you could take some, uh, like deodorant, like air it extra dry. You could spray that on a TV or a window or a vase or a van, and that would kind of muddy it up and make it look, you know, kind of a little opaque, so take off the glare. So for the first two seasons of the show, they just tried to keep the van as dirty as possible so that you couldn't see. As they came back in the later part of the second season, third season on, they added this finish, which is a satin finish to the van. They had a satin finish to the van. You'll notice that in the later episodes. Uh, because it just made it easier. It actually stays cleaner looking, no reflection. The satin, as opposed to flat, has just a little bit of sheen, but doesn't show any actual detailed reflection. So we decided to put the satin finish on this van because I've always thought that was the best looking of the paint. So we've already established that we know that top of the van was gunmetal gray. Gunmetal is different than the milky gray that I've seen some people use, which was on some of the cheaper toys. Gunmetal is, it's not quite a metal flake, but it is got a little, it does have a little bit of a sheen, not the same as a battleship gray. Um, and how we determined our colors is we took the uh, actual 118 scale A-Team van that was done by Hot Wheels Elite. And we just took it down to the paint shop and I said, you know what, these colors look good to me. We scanned that van and that's where we got our colors from. So um, let's talk about a couple other things. Now, obviously, I don't have the correct mirrors on this van. These are the stock mirrors. This particular van is a 1995 G15. That was the last year that they produced this van. And, uh, you know, so we, there were certain things that we just couldn't get right. In order to do the fiberglass mirrors, which are kind of hard to get, there's a few people that are selling them. They're generally about 500 bucks a pair. They, they, they mount here, they're riveted on, and they scoop around, and then you put little, small, little, tiny mirrors in there, and they're really hard to see. It's already hard enough to see out of this thing. We added, uh, for this particular van, a rear view camera and a little screen where the rear view camera goes, so you could see, because there's no windows in this van. Now, in the real A-Team van, there were rear windows that were blacked out. Matter of fact, they painted over them. This particular van just doesn't have any windows at all. Uh, which I prefer, even though it's not correct, but uh, I like it that way. This uh, visor didn't get mounted properly. I noticed how it was done in the TV show was they made an L bracket. That L bracket folded under the door frame here, 
folded this way, and then this was riveted to it. Now, if we had the opportunity to do that again, we would have done it correctly. We didn't have a chance to do it. Although, uh, as poorly as this looks like it's mounted, it's on there really well. The, the people that make these visors, they just make them out of fiberglass, and they don't do a great job at them. I, I, I gotta say, I'm sorry guys, you know who you are, but they, they're not reinforced. So re, we reinforce this thing by taking uh, my guy Omar, my fiberglass guy, he's fantastic. We took a piece of conduit pipe, bent it to the exact shape, and fiberglassed it into the lip of this thing all the way around because it keeps it from doing this little vibration when you're going. So there's a big thick pipe running all around the interior of this thing. Then on the top we reinforced it and then ran carriage bolts all the way through the thing, through the roof to hold it on. It's on there really well. It's not coming off, not easily. We did the same kind of thing to this rear wing. The rear wings, the way they expect you to install them is just to drill holes in them, put one of those little V-hooks in there like you're hanging a plant, like you're hanging a fern in your house. That wasn't gonna do for me. So what we did was we cut the sides open. We put metal plates in, fiberglass those in with welded nuts in there. Now, so there, there's big steel bolts that go right through the roof into the wing, into the nut that's up there with big washers. It's on there really well, not coming off. We did the same thing with these uh, antennas. We ran them all the way through the roof, the big washer and a bolt, so that they wouldn't just fly off while you're going down the road. Uh, we've learned the hard way about that. So, uh, you know, we, we could come around to the front here, take a look at some of the fog lights, trophy bright. Now, they just don't make fog lights uh, anymore, incandescent lights, in both amber and uh, clear in the same, uh, pattern. I've found some that are larger, some that are smaller, you know, but I couldn't find two of the same. So what I did was I bought all of the same clear lights. Then I found this spray paint that's made for simulating stained glass. Painted the lenses amber and they've been working great. We've tested them for months now. Eh, it's bright. And, and they're working fantastically. So that's how we did that. The, the push bumper is completely made from scratch. Um, I don't have a pattern for it. You can't buy it anywhere. You just have to make it. You have to get yourself some metal, cut it, weld it, bend it, paint it, mount it. That's how you have to do it. It's a real pain in the ass. Okay, interior wise, we really didn't do anything to the interior of this van as far as the uh, rear section goes. These, these doors can be tricky. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So basically we just have the factory GM rubber mat in here. And then we did some insulation to the ceiling and the walls. This is a uh, insulation sound deadening and also helps thermally. And uh, we're gonna let this customer, he's gonna decide how he wants to do the interior. Because some people like to do the uh, screen accurate style interior like we did on our last van. And other people wanna set it up like a cargo van or even a limo where they'll put in a J seat that wraps around and seats more people. Or, or whatever they want to do. So this van was sold at a kind of a discount without that part of the interior. But as far as this part of the interior goes, and you know what might be good is if you come around this way. This van was originally factory blue. We removed every single thing out of this van and painted it uh, gray. So all this looks brand new. We left the factory radio in here. This is really cool, I love this. Left this in here. But what we did was we modified what would have been the cigarette lighter and the ashtray and put a real short, small MP3 stereo in here. So this thing, you can, you can turn this on like that. And hello. Yeah. So Let's therefore see. I can't be held accountable for it. Okay. Uh, like I all said. right, we'll turn that off. Um, anyway, so that's where we put the radio hidden so that it still maintains this factory look. There's that uh, camera screen as we showed on the insert earlier. This is a little magnet you can put your phone. I added this little cup holder here because gosh darn it you gotta have a drink. You gotta have a gotta have a Mountain Dew while you're going down the road. And then the rest of this is kind of factory. I put a USB uh, plug here for your phone and a voltage gauge. That it's I don't know if you can tell right now but it's running. It's running and this is the fuel injected 305 V8. That's one of the good things about getting one of the later series vans like this 95, because this thing has overdrive, ABS, air uh, airbags, uh, fuel injected throttle body. Thing runs like a top. 
and it's probably the easiest one to get the parts for. So that was a great advantage to use in one of the later series vans. If I had my choice, I would have used a 1983 um, GMC van like the one in the show, but this is what we had to work with. All right, so the upper console here, this is not screen accurate. The one in the show would have been just a vinyl covered panel that came straight out and then with another piece that went straight up. Uh, the scanner is correct. The CB is not necessarily correct. These switches are not necessarily correct. Uh, but we did put speakers in them. And basically, this is a fiberglass one that we bought. The one that was on the show, you would just have to make. You would make it out of vinyl and uh, you would put some button cap screws on it and things. Uh, throughout the show, they went through a couple of different upper switches. These are the switches that run the fog lights. And these are all relayed. So these have a simple low power running to them and then another low power running out down the pillar into the uh, engine area where we put four 30 amp relays that are wired directly to a fused connection to the battery. Then when you turn this on, it triggers the relay, which turns on the lights. That way you're not pulling any amperage through this system other than like just a little bit of power, just enough to run this. Um, so I think a lot of people make the mistake of trying to wire the fog lights directly to these switches. And uh, that's bad because it's going to melt. All right, so we talked about this van. We talked about the other van. We've talked about some of the things that are wrong in this van. I, I think I forgot to mention we didn't put the lower um, uh, running guards on there because it's a long story. There was a mix up. We got the wrong ones, so we just left them off. The other buyers, he's going to put them on when he gets them later. Uh, so we're going to talk about the wheels. The wheels on here are correct. Even got the white letter BF Goodriches. Those look fantastic. I got out of the shadow there. These are the five lug staggered 15 inch wheels you got the the smaller ones up front and then the much wider bigger ones in the back and uh so let's talk about the vans that were on the show now i've got notes this time because i always forget this stuff so let's start with the van that was on the show the the main hero van that was on the show a team was a 1983 vandura g15 which is what this is this is a g15 we talked about the pinstripes about uh how the gloss was in the first two seasons now uh on the the screen use van, all of the vans had the handles painted body color. We did not paint the handles body color. I wish I had of, but we didn't. That should have been done. Uh, the mirrors, we talked about how they were fiberglass and wrapped around. We didn't put those on. We just put the factory mirrors on. If you wanted to convert it over to the fiberglass mirrors, you'd have to fill in all the mounting holes and the bolts and stuff that go here. We didn't have a chance to do that. Uh, the visor, I talked about the proper mounting of how this L bracket goes here. Pay attention to how that is when you, if you do your van, um, take a look at the show and how they did it. They made an L bracket that went through here. They riveted it on, worked perfect. I wish I had done that. We didn't. Running boards, I just talked about that. Let's talk about the wheels. Okay, the last van that we did, the one that we did for our television show Screen Machines back in 2015, that was a 3500 diesel van, which had the eight lug wheels. If you're gonna do an 18 van, whatever you do, don't do the eight lug wheels. I'm begging you. The problem is, is those rims, if you can find them, are gonna be 16 and a half rims and 16.5 tires are almost impossible to find in the correct profile. You can find them for a Hummer, they still make them, but they're tall, big wheels and they're gonna rip your fender off. You know, you're gonna to have to have the van jacked up and it's gonna be riding high. You, you, it's just way easier. Just wait till you can find the five lug version of the van. Don't do the 3500. I learned the hard way. It's difficult. We're gonna talk about that van though because that van did appear in the show. A lot of people argued with me about the wheels on that other van. The last couple of seasons, uh, and I made, let me see, where did I, I make a note here? The, uh, I think it was series five and six, you'll see that 3500 with the same satin paint, the eight lug wheels. You'll see that in most of their off-road seasons and all through their last fifth season. Uh, there was no sixth season, fifth season. Um, let's talk about something else, okay? The walls and the seats. These seats were custom made, but they're a little incorrect. They're kind of the right color and everything, but they're, they're, not, they're not quite exactly as tall as they're supposed to be. I know you can't really see in here, but they should be a little bit different than this. They were basically, you know, gray vinyl seats. I'm gonna leave that light on, it's cool. Um, the interior walls and the floors, they used this vinyl flooring. It was called half inch coin flooring. You'd find this in any bus or maybe anywhere, you know? <coughs> Excuse me. So it's cold out here. Now, 
I found the same flooring. They, they were selling it at Costco, like for your garage. This is the stuff that they put on the walls, they put on uh, the floors, but through various seasons and different episodes, it changed once in a while. So you gotta kind of pick the style that you like based on the van. Let's talk about the van. How many vans were there? According to Craig Baxley, who was the stunt coordinator for the show, there were two first unit vans and six stunt vans. So there were two main hero vans. Now the main hero van you're gonna notice is the one that had, had a Cyclone exhaust decal in the back. And that also had the big GMC on the back, just like ours, uh, if you wanna take a look. I, I, didn't, I don't have the Cyclone sticker. But we did put the, and you're going to be able to barely see it, but there's GMC sticker here. Normally these would be a Windows, and they had a Cyclone, a little red sticker here. Now, after about the first or second season, they, they had to cover up the GMC on the front and the back because it was, a, it was a big deal. But basically, NBC had a deal with other car manufacturers, and they couldn't show off GM's products. This was a problem with Knight Rider as well. Uh, Knight Rider, originally when it started, they talked about the car being, you know, a Pontiac Trans Am. Well, because they lost their deal with GM or whatever, they quit referring to it as that. All right, so we talked about the two first unit vans and then the six stunt vans. Let's talk about the six stunt vans. Now, if you go through all five seasons, which I did, I watched all the episodes, all five seasons, and made a clips reel of every single time I saw the van. All right, so you're going to see... Uh, the jump van, which is about a 76 or 78 van with the round headlights, has a roll cage in it. That's what they use for the jumps and the rolls. And they pretty much destroyed that van every time they did it. That's why they didn't do it very often. I mean, you'd see the thing go in the air and the, the goddamn uh, fender flares flew off and the hubcaps and everything. The hubcaps. I mean, the thing just it was obliterated. I mean, this thing, if you hop the curb with it, you're going to do major damage. You certainly can't jump a ravine. Okay, then in another episode, you see the van go into uh, a river, and it's uh, like late 60s, a Conline Ford, or whatever it is, uh, or maybe it's a 70s, I don't know, but it's in a Conline Ford, and you can see there's no engine in it, because California made them remove all the fluids, the gas tank, the engine transmission, everything, before they dumped it in the river. They pull it out of the thing, you can clearly see that it's a Ford van. So technically, you could build yourself an 18 van out of a Ford Conline, and it would be screen accurate just like the one with the round headlights that jumped. Then you had other vans that they used for other off-road scenes, like in seasons uh, four and five, I noticed that uh, the van didn't have any of the lower fog lights or lower valance, because they were doing a lot of off-road stuff, and it didn't, it didn't even have the lower fog lights, and the whole chin spoiler was just gone. They are just like, screw it. Matter of fact, in a bunch of scenes, whenever they'd show the close-up of the camera mounted to the front wheel, you could see that they had gaff tape holding this entire thing together. It had been ripped and broken so many times that black gaff tape was holding it on. So technically, you could be a screen accurate van and gaff tape with black duct tape your entire fender section on, and that would be screen accurate. Because I argue about the screen accurate bullshit all the time. Again, this is quoting Craig Baxley, who was the stunt coordinator, talking about the two first unit vans. So most of the hero van scenes that you saw was that one that had the Cyclone sticker. Let's talk about the sunroof. This van does not have a sunroof. Well, not all of the vans have sunroofs. There's one scene where you see Face. I, th I think it was Face. It was either Face or Murdoch. He, uh, he jumps off a wall onto the roof of the van. There's no sunroof. Then in the next scene, he climbs into the van through the sunroof. Seriously? So these kind of things, these kind of inconsistencies were happening. And let's face it. Back in 1983, 84, 85, you were watching TV, probably on a 19-inch TV. You didn't have a VCR. You couldn't back things up. It was like 240 lines of resolution. You couldn't tell what was going on. I mean, in fact, sometimes the roof wasn't even painted. There's that one scene, the top of the roof isn't even painted <laughs> properly. So these were just inconsistencies with some of the stunt things here. Uh, I want to look, check out my notes, see what else I'm missing here. I talked about the rear doors and the windows. Exhaust tips. Now, if I had my running boards here, you had the four exhaust tips that came out of the, the bottom down here. I doubt very seriously those were legit actual working. Probably on the Hero van, they were probably actually working. This van just has a stock exhaust system. It's actually a brand new exhaust system going out the back. But uh, the exhaust tips, that's, and how those are made, they're, I, I want to say they're two or two and a half inch square tubing. 
cut at an angle, welded together, made a four into one, uh, and run in. It's a pretty simple system. We haven't done it on our van, but I wish we had have. All right, so if you decide that you're gonna do an A-team van, something you're gonna need is a sliding door rod extension. They put these on a lot of custom conversion vans, but without it, you know, normally it's about half of this size. Without it, you're not gonna be able to clear the fender wells. And this is something that you're gonna have to put on, you know, and also you're gonna find a lot of doors that have a dent right here because people don't know how to close the door properly. I'm gonna instruct you how to operate the door. They push on it. You'll even see the A-Team van, several of the vans had a big dent right here because they would push here. Now what's supposed to happen, there's supposed to be a spring that when you pull this handle up, it, it's supposed to push this out. But you know, it's not, it's an old van, you can't get the parts very easily. But anyway, what happens is that rod is supposed to lock in that position and open the door to its furthest, furthest most width. So if you come back here, you'll see, and I know it's very dark, but this way it will clear the rear fender just by like millimeters, right? Now, the way you're supposed to close the door is you're supposed to give it one good swift motion. When the rod gets to this point right here, this part stops and then swings this in. Now, sometimes the pins aren't exactly perfect. The door hangs down a little, it doesn't want to close all the way. What's supposed to happen is when you fold this handle down, it sucks the rear end, it pulls it in. If you do it in one quick motion, it closes, right? But you see that what just happened there? So if I were to pull this open just a little bit, let's see, so you see it's not closed all the way. When you push this handle down, it sucks it right in there. Do not push on this part of the van. There's so many times though, you're gonna see the A-Team van driving down the road with this handle up. Simply because when Face or whoever jumped in the back, they, they would close the van, but not latch it. Now the door's not gonna go fly it open, but it was a pet peeve of mine. I'd be watching the show and I'd see the handle up and I'm thinking, Dirk, lock the door, damn it. And that's how it goes. Um, if you decide that you wanna redo all of your rubber on your van, there's lots of aftermarket rubber seals for these things, but I don't know what it is about them. But we just had, a, you really gotta slam the door. They're just too big for some reason than the regular stock stuff that you can't get anymore, especially on these rear doors. Like, I don't know what it is, but, but the rubber that they use for these rear sections um, are just really thick and you just can't get the door to close all the way. You gotta really slam it. See? And then you know, sometimes you end up with a little rubber sticking out up here. So like there's, there's like a gap here. There's maybe a quarter inch gap. And we have tried everything to try to, you know, shave that down and get it to, to close, but it's just really difficult. It's just, these are the things when you're restoring a, you know, a, a 25 or 30 year old vehicle, these are things that you gotta figure out. And maybe if you know the secret to how to do that because you're a, a guy that does rubber stripping, please mention in the comments below uh, your tips and tricks. So I, I wanna go back to talking about these wheels for a second. Now, uh, I'm, I'm still confused as to exactly what they're called. I've heard them called uh, hurricanes. I've heard them called turbines, but there's always been debate on how they're painted. I prefer to have the entire rim powder coated red and then paint in the black details. Some people do it the opposite way. Some people hand paint both of it and leave the other part of the rim natural. But that's the way I prefer to do it. I think powder coating the red because the red is gonna see the most exterior damage. I wanna talk about the lug nuts and how these things are mounted. Magnesium wheels are nice and thick on these things in the back. What I recommend you doing is putting in bigger, stronger, longer lug bolts in your hubs. You're gonna have to order custom long shank uh, lug nuts that go inside the rim. And then there's a special offset, like egg-shaped washer that go into place that 
you also have to order because there's so many people out there, and I've seen them on the 18 band forums, they get to the point where they're ready to put their wheels on, and they start putting the wheel on and they go, holy crap, I can't just put regular lug nuts on here. And there's like a gap. You have to have that washer in there. If you don't, you're going to be put these wheels on. We did a trip from Dallas to Baltimore. We stopped every time we got gas, had a big torque wrench, and had to retorque the wheels because they kept settling in. That's something you're going to want to do. Let's talk about the center hubcap. I don't have my center hubcap because I couldn't find any. I mean, American Racing is supposed to make some that kind of cone out, but they're two different sizes from the front and the back, and you're just going to have to find vintage ones, folks. They're hard to find, but these are some of the challenges you're going to face when you do your A-Team van. <coughs> Pardon me. Then, of course, there's the wheels. White letter BF Goodrich. I found some, and there are, other, are some that you can get. I ended up putting air shocks on the back of my van so I could air it up in the back, give it that little that little Kardashian. And uh, that gives it a nice little texture. But, you know, the wheels are going to be uh, something that is going to be a challenge for you, and they always are when you're working with the van because <clears throat> the wheels are the van. I mean, the paint job is important, but without those wheels, it is not an A-Team van. And uh, I... I I implore you again, do not do the eight lug wheels. It's just gonna it's just gonna be a pain in the ass, folks. So we're here in the van. It's running, it's been running the entire time. This thing runs uh, quiet as a mouse, which probably isn't what your average 18 fan would want. They probably want it to rumble and rumble. Um, being that this one doesn't qualify as an antique yet, I wanted it to pass emissions and stuff, so. Um, loving the screen, that's super cool. That makes things real easy for backing up. And I also love my big giant mirrors. Those come in handy as well. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna hot rod it. I won't throw you out the window. So basically the vans didn't change much at all. I'm doing this video, this, this internal video, because I have a lot of foreign fans who are watching from around the world and they've never really gotten to see the inside of the van other than on the television show. And really, it's not all that different. I mean, the dash and the cages and stuff for this thing didn't change hardly at all. I mean, uh, the radio changed a little bit. You know, a couple of... The, this thing hardly changed. Um, which is a great thing. It stayed pretty standard for a long time. And that, that makes it kind of easy to restore one of these. For instance, if you wanted to take an older dash and stick it in here, you could do it. Uh, you might have to do a little modification here and there, but pretty much uh, you'll be surprised with what you could do with this thing. And with all these lights on, we got plenty of visibility out the front. This is the same road that I've tested my Blues Brothers cars and Knight Riders and all those other cars that you've seen in my other videos. And we're taking it easy because I don't want to scare the neighbors and James here will get thrown out the side window. When I did my last video on this thing, the one we did, uh, we did some donuts in it, and it'll do some donuts, just like on the television show. If I were gonna build one of these for myself to be the ultimate, most perfectest, coolest 18 van ever, I think what I would probably do is put an LS swap in here, an iron block LS with uh, the overdrive transmission. And I can't tell what this guy's gonna do. I wanna turn around. <clears throat> that's probably how I would set it up um, just because that's about the most reliable engine that you could stuff in this thing this thing has a 305 which is the same thing they put in some of the Camaros and the Trans Ams uh, you know it's not a hot rod motor it's got so much emission stuff on it that it's like just like uh, I'm going to turn around in this parking lot I don't know what the turning radius of this big sun bitch is. Oh, this is what we can do. We'll go through this this little driveway here. Is this a driveway or a curb? We're gonna find out. I'm sure these people are like, uh, dude, you got like five million headlights on. Jesus. <laughs> I drive with my fog lights on because I'm an asshole. You do got great visibility, though, I will say. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> ah, 
very rude of me. You know, another great thing about these vans is that they've been around for a long time. They're workhorses. I mean, these were used for, you know, plumbers, electricians, whatever. They, they go for hundreds of thousands of miles. They're tough and they're durable. And they have some basic creature comforts. You know, this thing has air conditioning, heat, uh, you know, safety features and things. However, I think that if I had the opportunity to build the perfect A-Team van, rather than killing myself to try to find a naked cargo van with no windows, <clears throat> and if you were good at fabrication, what would be probably smarter would be to buy a nice conversion van that doesn't have a topper. And convert the doors, cover up the windows, weld sheet metal over them. And the reason I say that is because then you would get a van that probably has front and rear air conditioning, power locks and windows, tilt steering, cruise control, and all the stuff they put on only the conversion vans. Now, you could potentially order one of these vans with all that stuff from the factory. Nobody ever did. The guys that were using these for work, they bought the cheapest, most bland version of this van that you could find. I can't, can't tell you how many times I've found these vans for sale and they got no radio, no air conditioning. The only thing that came standard on them was a heater. Pretty ridiculous. So, you know, being that I've built two of these and I've been a member of so many of the 18 van forums and, and I've seen other people's conversions, I think I've got a pretty good idea of how, uh, how you would do one of these and do it correctly. And if I had to do it all over again, uh, I wouldn't. We spent months on this thing getting it ready. And uh, as far as a profitability goes, this is probably the worst profitability you're going to get out of a movie vehicle. You don't make as much money on them as it costs to do it. So when people ask me how much it costs to build one of these vans and I tell them, you know, typically you can't put one together that's worth a crap for less than $25,000. And at the end of the day, it's a $1,500 van with $10,000 worth of paint. So, you know, it's just one of those things you have to really want it. You have to really love it. And it has to be something that, that you're really passionate about. I, for one, am really passionate about the A-Team. The A-Team, Knight Rider, and those NBC shows that I watched when I was a kid were the best stuff in the world, and it's the reason I'm the way I am today. I mean, I dress like an A-Team van. I wear black and red. Uh, my cars are all black and red. And when I was a kid, I had all the A-Team and Knight Rider toys. It was just a great show, and um, <clears throat> I love this. I, I, I get teary-eyed thinking about it. But I'm glad that you joined me here. Uh, on our on our page you got to watch this video all right guys thanks for joining me on this video hope it wasn't too long I just wanted to give you all the information that I could and uh, this is what we do here at Bob's prop shop we've been here for a while we build movie vehicles you've seen my DeLorean time machine the Ghostbusters car Knight Rider Blues Brothers and all that other stuff you've seen our television show screen machines on the reels channel Discovery Turbo and D Max and the rest of the world I've been on Pawn Stars Auction Kings Food Network and all those other cool things. I did Brian Johnson's Cars That Rock. I could brag all day about all this stuff. But uh, I'm just telling you that because, yes, I am that guy you saw on TV. Uh, my YouTube channel is exploding, and I have to thank you guys for that. So please give this video a like and subscribe. And more than anything, please comment in the videos. Tell me about what you liked, what you didn't like, what your observations were, what your experiences were, things like that. And I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. But First and foremost, I want to say that if you want to argue with me about something on this van, before you post anything, go get yourself a box set of the A-Team like I did with all five seasons. Watch all the episodes and then comment. Because I have a gazillion people comment on this thing all the time and say, well, that's not right, or this is blah, 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 and they're completely way off the mark. So uh, that's my advice. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe over here on this button. And this is my next video. I'm Video Bob.